Hey, hello everyone, my name is AppleGuy, and welcome to the first bonus video of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. The Let's Play has just concluded in the sense that we have completed the entire story of the game, but there are still things I want to share from this lovely video game. And so we're going to take three or so bonus videos to explain the things that I have not gotten to show. Starting with the file selection screen. We, you will notice, <laughs> well, it's kind of embarrassing, but you'll notice that our save file is gone. That was uh, my own fault. After I finished the recording, I spammed through the text of starting up the second quest, and it says, hey, if you want to save your save data, don't overwrite your save. Select a new one. And of course, I overwrote my save. So for other bonus videos, we'll be using this save, which is very incomplete. But this is the one we'll be using. Anyway, if we go down here to the second quest, we will have the option to input our name. And we will do uh, just the same. We'll just go ahead and call ourselves Link. And uh, we will have the option here to start up the second quest. Now, this is not exclusive to the second quest, but I have not mentioned it, I don't believe. Hero mode is an option in this game. In hero mode, you take double damage and won't be given recovery hearts at any point. This mode is only for the truest heroes. So even if you were to go to a file that is not on the second quest, of course, the second quest is indicated by the Triforce stamp and the yellow paper. Uh, you can still toggle into hero mode if you wanted to. Uh, it's just a trickier challenge, like it says double damage and no health drops. So you'll have to be careful of that. Uh, looks like we're going to have to re-enter the name again. Not particularly a huge deal, I am not playing through the game a second time. So it is not uh, particularly relevant, but we're going to go ahead and start up a hero mode save file. And of course, the opening cutscene uh, will begin. We can skip it because we are in the second quest. We can skip some cutscenes. So here we are once again. There are a few other differences with the second quest. Um, beside, well, actually, I haven't mentioned any of the differences. There are some differences with the second quest. One is very noticeable right here. Errol is not sporting her blue dress. She begins and ends the game in her, her maroon skull dress that the pirates make her. So it's just a little... A cosmetic change there. Another cosmetic change is Link will never put on the hero's tunic. He will go to grandma's house and he'll pretend he's putting it on, but you get to play the whole game in Link's uh, blue and orange pajamas. His lobster t-shirts and his orange pants will be there for the entire game. If that is something interesting to you, well, you ought to play through the game and get to the second quest as quickly as possible. Another thing that is different is all of the ancient Hylian text in the video game will be translated. Talking to a Jaboon, or the Dragon Roost uh, Cavern Dragon that I'm blanking on the name right now, Valu. Jaboon, Valu, and the Great Deku Tree, all their text will be in plain English or whichever language you are playing the game in. Uh, if you're curious how I got the translations that I got for my videos, of course, I added uh, captions for those moments. Uh, it's because official translations do exist, they're baked into the game, you just have to play through the game in the second quest. Another thing that is a little bit less important, but also still incredibly important, is that uh, if you go and get the Picto Box from Windfall Island, it will begin as the Deluxe Picto Box, which means it will always take colored photos. And you may think, well, why is that important? That's not really relevant. It's incredibly relevant if you are going for the 100% Nintendo Gallery, which is something we'll talk about in the next bonus video. Uh, but in order to get 100% in the Nintendo Gallery, you need to take a picture of every NPC in the game in color and deliver it to uh, the place where, um, where the statuettes are made. And that includes enemies like uh, Goma, where if you... Uh, if you defeat Goma and don't take a colored picture, you don't get the prize. Hi. Thought the game just froze right there, uh, but we're fine. You see, Grandma is holding no clothes, and so we're going to be trying on no clothes. Yeah, you got the hero's new clothes. What the? Wow, they're really light because they don't exist. What's the matter? Why the long face? You can see them, can't you? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, there you go. As you can see, they, they make a little joke about it, but yes, Link lives in his pajamas for this entire adventure. Hey, here's a fun fact about this family. Link and Errol are, vo are both voiced 
uh, by Sachi Matsumoto, who also voices Link in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Hyrule Warriors. She voices Toon Link. Uh, she's also the voice of Toon Link in Phantom Hourglass, but surprisingly not in Spirit Tracks, which I thought was a little bit interesting. Oh, hello, Grandma. Let me go. Yes, okay. So as you can see now, we completed the little clothes changing ceremony, but we're still in our pajamas. As we should be. As we should be. Alright, so that is about all that is relevant uh, thus far. Um, we've pretty much seen what there is to see for the second quest. But I'm also going to take this time to share some trivia about the game and go over things that I missed in my original playthrough. I do believe we'll be hopping over into the other file, or at least showing uh, pictures. Uh, popping up on the screen. Maybe I won't be officially going over to the other file, uh, but I have some things I want to fact check and some things that I want to show, and so I'll be doing that uh, for the remainder of the video. One of the things I want to discuss is uh, actually irrelevant to the game, but there are two amiibo made from the uh, Wind Waker HD characters. Released for the 30th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda series, Toon Link and Toon Zelda received a batch set of amiibos. I actually own them in the box, they are two in one box, I will show a picture of them, and there is no amiibo features in this game, despite this game coming out on the Wii U, which essentially gave birth to the amiibo, but no amiibo functionality, which I'm actually really surprised at, because there was an, a feature in the original game, in the SD version, that would have hugely benefited uh, with the incorporation of the amiibo. Uh, basically, I mentioned it before, but there is a, there is a thing in, in the original game, and it is the- why can't I look around? This is super weird. Alright, there we go. There's a feature in the original game called the Tingle Tuner. The Tingle Tuner uh, was a feature you could get by plugging in a Game Boy Advance. It was originally what Tingle gave you ask after rescuing him instead of the Tingle Bottle, which of course we know the Tingle Bottle is absolutely useless these days. Uh, but the Tingle Tuner was a little mini-game sort of element you could add in where you could see uh, the map of the game on your Game Boy Advance and also interact uh, as Tingle. You had several options. One of the options was to um, give Link items. He, uh, he pretty much served as a shop and you could uh, interact with him for that. I'll go over the items in just a moment, uh, but Tingle's main goal was each dungeon contains one Tingle statue. And your goal was to find those Tingle statues using the Tingle Tuner. And, um, you know, that, that was a little quest element for that. Those items do still exist in the HD version. There is one per temple. And if you find them by going to the spot and exploding them with a bomb, you can take them to Tingle and he will give you 50 rupees per uh, statue you could deliver him. And if you deliver all five statues, he will give you 500 rupees. Uh, there's also reference to a place where you could get unlimited rupees, however that was removed in the HD version of the game, and so the reference is very redundant because it doesn't exist. Anyway, so the Tingle Tuner was the location, it wasn't really a location, it was a feature that allowed you to buy items uh, using your rupees from Tingle. There was a lot of items, some of them really useful, some of them really not useful, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go over all of them right now. I have a list on my second monitor, so I do not forget them. The first one you could get is the Seagull Pen. The Seagull Pen was free, and it just allowed you to make marks on the sea charts that you could see on the Game Boy Advance. So maybe you, you wanted to go from one island to another island to yet another island, and uh, and there you could, um, you could keep track of your chart, I guess. I don't know. You, you can make a route. It was just a pen to draw on. I mean, not particularly the most relevant thing, but it was there. You could also buy a Tingle Bomb that cost 10 rupees, and that was the special bomb you needed to use in order to uh, find the uh, Tingle statues. You had to use a special Tingle Bomb on the areas where they were hidden, and then you could, um, then you could locate them. They're in, in the HD version, you use regular bombs. Of course, the Tingle statues aren't as important because there's no Tingle Tuner. Here's one that I found really interesting. You could buy for 30 rupees something called the Tingle Balloon, which would let you walk on air. This is starting to sound like 
like a game shark, right? Like th this is starting to sound like actual cheats. Like you're putting in cheat codes to the video game. Uh, but no, these were not cheat codes. These were actual in-game features that they wanted you to use. There was the ability Tingle Shield for 40 rupees, which continuing with the theme of sounding like a cheat code, made you invincible for 10 seconds. There was Kulu Limpa, which was a roll of the dice of activating any of the previously mentioned abilities. It could activate zero abilities. It could activate all of the abilities. It was, you know, randomness. That cost 40 rupees as well. There was uh, a special type of potion called Ting, T-I-N-G, like Tingle, but without the L-E. Uh, you could buy a red, green, or blue Ting for 20, 40, or 80 rupees, respectively. And that was just a way to give you an instant red, green, or blue potion. So if you were in the middle of a fight and your magic was low, you could buy a green Ting and it would get restored. I'd say green Ting, or red, blue, and green Ting is probably most infamous for people who speedran uh, the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker SD on the GameCube because there was a glitch called Zombie Hovering where you would get Link's health down to zero, spam jump attacks, and you could basically fly, but the second you touched uh, the ground, uh, you would instantly get game overed. However, that wouldn't happen if when you touched the ground, you healed yourself with a red ting, and then you would be obviously able to continue. That's how people would skip the Ganon fight, uh, the puppet Ganon fight in the SD version of the game. You could also activate a guidebook for free, which gave you a tutorial, basically what I'm saying right now. And there was an option to get the hand-me-down Tingle Tuner, which summoned Knuckle, Tingle's brother, uh, to give you a little shop where you could buy bait, arrows, and if your arrows were full, that would be replaced with bombs. So it was a little portable beetle shop, uh, essentially. Super useful if you were ever in need. However, you can hold up to 99 bombs and 99 arrows, and bait's not that necessary. So I don't see why you would go for it particularly, but it's an option if you needed it. And it's always nice to have options. Alright. Now I want to go across some fun facts about this game. Some of these I have mentioned before, and some of these I have not mentioned. Um, one of them actually I've mentioned, the other two I, I haven't. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that this is the only 3D Zelda game that does not have uh, titles for... Um, Breath of the Wild is a question. But uh, at one point in time, this was definitively the only Zelda game to not give the bosses titles. For example, in Dragon Roost Cavern, you fight Goma. However, in the Ocarina of Time, in the Great Deku Tree, you fight the parasitic armored arachnid, colon, Goma. You see how Goma's given uh, a bit of a title? Uh, so something to like preface it. There is none of that in this game, which is interesting. Breath of the Wild is unique because you have like Wind Blight Ganon, which Wind Blight might be a title, Ganon the boss name, but every boss in that game is also Ganon, so it's hard to distinguish. I'm, I'm gonna say it. This is the only game that does not have a boss title. That's 3D, which is pretty interesting. All right. Another little factoid for you guys, this is a fact check from earlier in the series. There are real world constellations that are visible in the night sky of this game. You can look up when it's nighttime and do your best to see some constellations. I will include some pictures here of constellations. I'll trace them out as well. Make them very, very obvious. Maybe I'll even do some side-by-side uh, -side comparisons if I feel like editing that in. That could be fun. And then the final thing I want to mention, just a little bit of trivia that I enjoyed learning about uh, way back when, is that uh, the cries of the choo-choo enemies in this game are actually sound bites of a sped-up argument in Japanese. It's, um, it's very, very interesting. I believe I first heard this from Did You Know Gaming, which is a very popular YouTube channel. Uh, they do a lot of Nintendo videos, but also a lot of videos of just other gaming things where they they do trivia segments, essentially. And uh, I remember learning about that and saying, well, that's, that's pretty funny. Not particularly useful trivia, but I found it to be pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, I want to go ahead and play that for you guys right now because I think it's super, super interesting. And I feel like it would be uh, interesting for you guys to be able to hear it as well. So I will find a clip and show it to you guys. Obviously, credit will be given in the description as well as in the bottom left of the video. So here that is. 
めるなら、揚げたらも火もついばこのさら、このトーナメントに登り、トーナメントのは、水をこぎるのはまだ化け物ばか未熟なピア。All right, and with that, we have reached the end of the Outset Island portion of the game in the second quest, as well as the end of all the things that I had to say. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is obviously not a definitive list of every single thing that is,、uh, you, you could know about this game. This is just some of the stuff that I wanted to cover and some of the factoids that I found to be pretty interesting. And I hope you guys found it to be interesting as well. If you have any other bits of information about this game you think are pretty cool that people should know about, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be responding to those. I respond to every comment that I get.、Um, if I got something wrong, please feel free to correct me. In the Let's Play Majora's Mask、uh, bonus videos, I believe I defined、uh, Oni Link, or、uh, sorry, I defined Fierce Didi Link、uh, as Oni Link. However, that was actually a fan name. And the actual name was different. And I learned that from a commenter who,、uh, who spoke Japanese. And that was super, super cool. So if you guys have any corrections or extra things to add, please leave a comment. And、uh, I, I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. But that is going to be all for the very first bonus video of the series. So I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe. And tell your friends on my channel if you think they would enjoy it. It means a lot to me if you guys spread my videos around. In the next video, we're going to be learning about the Nintendo Gallery. It is a very in depth feature, and I want to dedicate an entire video for it. So I'll catch you guys all back here next time. Until then, as always, take care.